Look at this place, our Waianae community, a 16-mile stretch of beautiful coastline on the island of Oahu in the state of Hawaii, a home to nearly 45,000 residents, of which more than half are of native Hawaiian ancestry. The sun, like most of our people, shines all year round. I like to say we're the best kept secret on Oahu. Home to some of the most beautiful people and untouched, unpopulated beaches. Home to Waianae High School, home of the Sea Riders, and our Sea Rider Productions program, a fitting environment for learning. But below the surface is an extremely depressed community with few job opportunities. Home to the largest homeless population in the state, high unemployment, and consistently low academic scores. There are nine schools in our district, all notorious for being ranked on the bottom of every social economic measure. The cycle of poverty is evident when you look beyond the pretty scenery. Students who live in poverty come to school every day without the proper tools for success. As a result, they fall behind all their classmates physically, socially, academically, and emotionally. A small rural town in the middle of nowhere with people that are expected to do nothing. Many of those negative things is what pushed me away when I graduated from Waianae High School. But they say you can take the girl out of Waianae, but you can't take the Waianae out of the girl. I felt compelled to return to my alma mater to teach as a teacher and by the way, the only open line was Spanish, and I was not fluent at all in Spanish. Our school struggles in keeping students engaged, and in 1988, our graduation rate was one of the lowest in the state. So on a whim, I transformed, I gave my students a video camera and transformed our classroom into a video production program. I saw how the video was a great tool to make learning fun and to make learning relevant. I thought, that's it. Lights, camera, engagement. I immediately thought, OK, that's it. A video production program, let's do this. But I also remember people saying, Candy, it's not going to work. Number one, they're teenagers. Number two, they're Waianae high school teenagers. Number three, they're too stupid. And number four, they're going to rip you off. In fact, some people even laughed at the idea. It was a struggle just to keep the program off the ground. And finally, in 1993, we launched with 85 students, two classrooms, two teachers, one edit bay, and six cameras. We would pack 40, sometimes 50 students into our non-air conditioner room. And that was just the first year. We discovered that you have to work hard for everything in life. And it won't always be easy. Sometimes you're going to fall, and you're going to fall hard. But pick yourself up and start all over again. There are guidelines on how to create a successful media program. I visited four of the media programs across the, straight, across the state, many from affluent uh, communities. You needed funding, which got you equipment, which might get you better looking projects, which might get you some awards, and that was how it was done. But we were determined to be successful, to build a program that was second to none. We didn't have funding, but what we did have was passionate, willing students that embraced the idea that it was okay to fail, and that you will just have to pick yourself up and start all over again. And for 10 years, we did just that. And that's when the funding, the equipment, and the better looking projects and awards started to roll in. Enrollment increased, along with our high school graduation rate. So many would have considered us a very successful media program, but were we really preparing our students? We needed to do more. So in the middle of all the success, we decided to rip it apart and start all over again from scratch. We realized our success was empty because students were graduating, but really without much direction. So we contacted our local feeder schools, our community partners and organizations to help construct a more co comprehensive pipeline 
of preparing students to go from skill-based learning to life skills-based learning, a place where students could engage in real-life projects that made learning fun and relevant, a seamless pipeline of creative media along our Leeward Coast from elementary to middle to high school to higher education and finally on to the workforce, our entire community working together. It's been hard work, but I think we've accomplished that goal. Enrollment in our program is now 250 students. We have six teachers in six classrooms that integrate multimedia disciplines of journalism, video, photography, graphic arts, and animation. And I'm really proud to say three of those gentlemen up there on that screen are graduates of our program. More than equipment for everyone. And over the last 25 years, hundreds of local, national, and international awards and recognitions. What we've realized is no one does anything alone. It takes teamwork and cooperation to make something work, whether you're the writer, the producer, the editor, whatever your role is, it takes teamwork. And most importantly, be humble and be thankful for what you have. Remember our beginning years, especially when we didn't have much, but we made it work. And be thankful, especially for everyone who believed we could do this. It's not about the cutting edge equipment, or new classrooms, the awards, recognitions, and especially the difficult environment they come from. It's our students that will carry these lessons with them. It's our students who will provide the example of how. It's our students who will find connections through our values. There is no ending to this story, but this is what will happen next. We will continue to graduate more students every year they will become professionals in all industries. And it's our students who will create a new cycle. In our small rural town, in the middle of nowhere, people producing people, producing people that are expected to do something great, and they will. Mahalo and thank you, Fargo.